Good morning again, church family. If you're at home and would like to join me in singing What a Friend You Have in Jesus for an, our opening hymn, please go ahead. And for those of you who are here, you can hum along. Hello, everyone. It's so nice to have you here. And a few quick announcements. Number one, if you are on YouTube right now, for some reason, YouTube is seemingly uh, non existent in this whole streaming thing. Is it up now? Um, the Facebook is online, but uh, YouTube, but we will see uh, how things go. It's one step at a time, sweet Jesus, right? Is it wonderful to be here or what? Yeah, I know uh, those who are online, I feel for them if they're missing, but hey, we are here and Jesus is here and it's wonderful to have you here. So um, now I'd like to ask, um, there's Pastor Ryan here and um, before I uh, connect with something with Pastor Ryan, I'd like to ask Lily, please come forward for a second. I'm going to grab a mic if that's okay and um, very good. Lily, you have something to ask for God's closet, I believe, and so please come forward and, and let us know what donations you were asking for for God's closet. Okay. Yes, go ahead and give the update. Good morning, church. So happy to be here today. Um, so we have a, you know, it's really not God's closet to hunger. It's really God's closet, Sunland Tahanga, and Livingstone. That's right. You know, really, it's, even though it started in Tahanga, we're, we're sister church. So, That's right. Um, we have 
wonderful people who came Sunday and we organized the, the build the our fellowship hall and um, we I started the event bright which is the online registration in a matter of two weeks we have about 45 people sign up Amen. and there's a yes praise God um, there's a lot of people who are interested in diapers you know there is such a big need so I thought I'd uh, get a company to do it, but then they fell through. So uh, I thought, hey, okay, maybe God wants us, <laughs> us together, um, you know, put together this instead of asking an another group. So for those who are, you know, would like to donate maybe a box of diapers, it's from one sizes one to six. Um, we have a variety of people who, moms who are coming in, some are new moms, some are just still pregnant. I had a, a father that says, I'm coming all the way from Corona to come in, and, and she's got, he's got a nine, 18 month old child. So he's a new father. So I mean, if we can help them, that's the, the goal of this God's Closet, to help um, the people now in need, you know. So we have the gently used clothes. So if, if, there's a, if you'd like to donate, you know, the, the, uh, a diaper, a box of diaper, maybe bring it to church. What sizes? Um, well, you know, one to six. Uh, I will count how many people need the specific size, but basically one to six. Sizes one to six. Um, and, you know, um, that's it. So I hope you can, we can do that. And um, thank you very much for your yep. donation. If you wish to give, you can either schedule with Lily or myself or Pastor Ryan at Sunland Tahanga, or you can bring it the Living Stones. Pretty much any day we have someone around, and we can kind of bring it over there. It's up to you, but diapers uh, are definitely a need for the age group that we're, uh, we're dealing with in God's closet. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lily. Thank you so much for all you do. And uh, here you go. Thank you. Also, um, we're planning in the next perhaps two weeks to do something special, Ryan. What is that? Uh, Happy Sabbath Church. Um, I'm very excited to work with uh, the church and Pastor John um, on moving the church forward. Um, we're actually brainstorming about uh, starting an adult Sabbath school on Fridays uh, from about 7 to 8 so that we can have children's Sabbath school from 6 to 7. Um, however, we do need volunteers for teachers. Uh, if you have uh, that gift of Sabbath school teaching, or if you want to, uh, we can, um, we can uh, work it out. Uh, you can ask Pastor John or let me know um, that if you want to volunteer to teach Sabbath school. That's right. And we're talking about right now adult Sabbath school. And I would like those of you who are online, uh, which cameras? Are we on this one? If you are at Sunland Tahanga, if you are at Sunland Tahanga, we'd also like teachers from Sunland Tahanga. I'd like to have both churches have kind of a rotation together. If you are teaching also, what I want to ask is we're going to set up a safe room with, uh, where we can set up the teaching where you come in from 7 to 8 and teach from the location and everyone else at home on Zoom or whatever application we use can then interface at your home. And uh, Pastor Ryan will be moderating or teaching in this. And so um, we just are looking to have it be cleanly done. And, and something that someone that doesn't know much about the Bible can learn. When we say Sabbath school, literally it's Bible study, but using the Sabbath school program. So if you are interested in being one of the facilitators or teachers of this, Please let Pastor Ryan or myself know, but especially Pastor Ryan, and give him the information, and we can start a process of getting this under control, and then the next step, we'll start organizing for kids stuff. I'm hoping we're open so we don't have to go through all this for young people, but we need to start doing Sabbath school and stuff for our young people. We really have to, and we just haven't had the ability to do that yet so now one step at a time sweet jesus right ryan so um excellent thank you so much let's give a hand and um and now this is the time also if you'll notice online 
Or here, there's a little giving box over here. There is uh, the, um, the prayers we need to give over there. And also there is the offering. You can put it, make sure you mention either if you're ST, Sunland Tahanga, or LS, Living Stones. And if you're online, you can see here, where is it? Right over here. Over here, there's the little uh, things. You can put your phone up to it if you're on a TV or a computer. And you can give online to your individual church, whether it be Sunland Tahanga or Living Stones. We really appreciate the amount of time and the amount of love you guys have given to our churches. And that reminds me, who here saw a video last Sabbath afternoon with this thermometer? Now, I know some of you might not see the thermometer completely here because maybe a tree is in the way. But did you see the thermometer video? If you did not see it, you got to go back afterwards and take a look. For God has done an amazing thing. Absolutely an amazing thing. When this pandemic started, I expected the whole debt reduction of 111000 We had made it to 65% of getting rid of that debt. And I said, it's over. Basically, until the pandemic's done, then we'll restart up again because finances became terribly hard. But all of a sudden, I get this email from Sherry. You're out there with Fritz and Miriam, Sherry. She emails me and says, Pastor, this was in July or August-ish. She says, Pastor, we are this close to being done. I'm like, what? And then I get another email in September. It's finished. Done. And Sam, I was able to go see Sam Carvajal. As you know, Sam and Grace were... Uh, doing their matching funds, even though we're done with it, he gave another $4,500 check towards it and said, use it for the roof that you're fixing, whatever. So praise be to Jesus. Man, even through pandemics, God took pennies and made something happen. Can we give a hand to God for that? I'm telling you, you guys, um, we always think about our might and our power to get something done, but it is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord, right? Remember that? Malachi. Isn't it Malachi that he said that? Incredible message because his Holy Spirit is work and his spirit is pandemic proof, right? Pandemic proof. So God always finds a way. So, uh, and this brings us to prayer time. And uh, I'd like to ask, um, let's have a little music. Is that okay, Christy? A little music here. And um, I would like to, uh, I'm going to first mention some prayers here that I've gotten. And uh, Jacqueline's been asking again for prayer for her spirit, her body to be healed. And also, uh, we have a praise uh, for Eddie. Now, I don't know, Eddie and Fabiola. Who here knows Eddie and Fabiola? Eddie Rivera and Fabiola? They are, um, Eddie just got out of the hospital. He found out he had an infection of his, uh, the prostate. He was, uh, he was in massive pain. And Fabiola's been through a difficult time. They were not anywhere near the church, but both of them had tested positive for COVID-19. And so um, we just thank God they're getting through this. And so we want to remember them in our prayers. I got permission from them to be able to share that. Also, we want to remember uh, Carolyn Su Sen Ong over in, over in um, Kiwiland, over in uh, uh, New Zealand. Uh, we hope you're doing okay, Susan. And I don't know if uh, you're on Facebook. Hopefully the YouTube is up. Who knows? Um, also, we want to remember Donna's prayer request, Donna and Dalen, for Mary Steck, who fell and, and, and broke her neck. And she's had a surgery. She's doing well, which is amazing. Uh, we also want to remember John, who's dealing with cancer as well. And uh, Mason, who's dealing with a bone cancer. And also... Those who are, uh, uh, there's a Barbara 
and had a Monday surgery and uh, those in God's closet and those studying Discover Bible School. Do you have any special prayer requests that you want to mention here today? Any special ones you want to mention? First names. If not, then unspoken requests. Do you have any unspoken requests? I know the hands always go up for that. And uh, it's so nice. There's a few of my friends here that I have not seen for a while. It's so wonderful to have you at church. And uh, it's a beautiful day today, isn't it? And, and by the way, I want to thank God. The Agdamia family, Christy, and uh, I see Ogi. And we've got, well, I'm going to just say the entire Agdamia family. It's wonderful to have you guys here. And uh, to be able to do it. And Melvier. Where's Melvier? There's Melvier over there. And uh, we've got a real treat today. And to be able to have all our friends here. Um, and let's ask now for God to be with us. Oh, and by the way, by the way, Eric Sumanthi over in Indonesia. He mentioned that he's going to be with us if he can stay awake at 2 in the morning over in, in uh, where was it? Where is he? Uh, uh, it's not Jakarta. It's, uh, uh, never mind. I'll, it'll eventually come to me. But Eric, you are in our prayers as well. And I, I hope that you're be able, able to catch this even though YouTube is down. Let's bow ourselves for prayer in whatever way is comfortable that works for you. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you. We love you. We praise you. Thank you, Lord, for bringing those here that are able to come and those who are not able to come be with them as well. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to come to you. Lord, we ask that we learn how to be pandemic proof in our lives as you are pandemic proof. Lord Jesus, thank you for the promise that you have given to us that wherever two or three are gathered together, you shall be there with us. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. Lord, we especially ask for you to, to bless not only every person here and every person online that is here, but also we ask you to bless this community, all these houses, all these houses on our western side and eastern side and to the north and the highway to our south. Bless each one as they pass by. We ask that you allow us as a church in some way to show your love and your caring for them. Teach us, Lord, to not become self-dependent, uh, self only thinking about ourselves only. Teach us, Lord, to be in you, which means that we care for the community around us. Lord, also we ask that you bless our denomination, our churches, Livingstone, Sun, Lathalunga, our denomination, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and our country, and the world. Lord, allow us to have common sense when it comes to your will and your purpose for our church. Lord, help us to be able to reach out to the communities around us. Lord, through all the technical Babylon that there is out there, of all the computers and everything, allow your word to move forward. Sometimes the false prophets of society tell us that you are not in charge and we must fear, but teach us to fearlessly move forward. Of course, keep us safe. Of course, keep us um able through this pandemic time to be able to be healthy and wash our hands and take care but at the same time give us a self-assurance not self-assurance but assurance in you Lord and Lord we look forward to the day when we will all eat together at a long table no more social distancing in a earth made new we believe we love and we hope on you only, Lord. And now let's end with a prayer you taught us to pray. And if you wish to say it with me, our Father who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive those indebted to us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, power, and glory forever, ever, and ever. Amen. he lives I shall find strength to stand against the tempter's power he is my refuge and defense in every troubled hour because he lives because he
Again, thank you so much, you guys. Um, I know we're outside and we're working it out, but one step at a time, thank you. And um, it is now time to pull your Bibles out. You have your Bible here? Raise them up if you got them, or if you got them on the phone or wherever you have them. And um, know this, that no matter what happens, if you have a hard copy of the Bible, no matter how uh, <laughs> technical things sometimes go awry, you can still always have it with you, okay? It's nothing like the hard copy. But if you're on a phone, that's good. Let's turn to Proverbs in the middle of the Bible. Proverbs, almost exactly in the center. Written, it's, it's Proverbs actually a bunch of fortune cookies. Dad always said that in class. Dad's here, mom and dad over in the car listening on the radio. And um, uh, Proverbs is a bunch of fortune cookies. You ever have a fortune cookie where you break it open, you find out what it says? Sometimes it's more like computers say than Confucius say. Sometimes it says you're going to have a wonderful day or something like that and your day's terrible, whatever it is. <laughs> but I like the ones that have a message that's important. And Solomon liked that as well. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Well, let's read the verse first and then we will pray. It's Proverbs chapter 18, right about in the middle. Proverbs chapter 18 starting with verse 24. It's only one verse. One who is unreliable, one who has unreliable friends, soon comes to ruin. Now, don't answer me if you have unreliable friends. Have you experienced unreliable friends sometimes? I'll be there. Where are they? I don't know. You know how those, one who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a, what, a brother or a sister. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Jesus, thank you. We praise you and we ask for you to be with us as we discover friends this morning. In your name, amen. In your Bibles, I'd like you to turn to chapter 15 of Luke. Luke chapter 15, starting with verse 1. Luke 15, verse 1. And you've heard what we're going to be reading before, but I'd like you to look at it just a bit differently than you have before. Luke 15, 1. It says... Now the tax collectors, and by the way, tax collectors, are they good people in the old world? I know you all love the IRS today, don't you? Don't you like when you get a letter from the IRS? It's one of those, oh, I always wanted to get a letter. You're being audited. Okay, now the tax collectors... (laughs) In the ancient world, they said these tax collectors, we don't like them. And by the way, tax collectors were actually really bad back then. Because what they would do is they weren't paid the way they should be paid. They were there to collect. But then Caesar said, you know, anything uh, over the top, you can kind of take a percentage if you want. Some probably had lower percentages. Others had higher. And yet they could sick the military on the person if they didn't pay their taxes. Boy, You wouldn't like that, would you? Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus, but the Pharisees and teachers of the law, Pharisees, meaning who here does Bible study? Who here studies the Bible? Then you're probably a Pharisee. (laughs) We all who, in our religious system, the Pharisees are the ones that actually would study and learn the Word of God and know the law. The Sadducees, they were more like power grabbers, a little more liberal philosophically. They weren't so much into the Bible. They were a little more into the power of the temple. That was the priesthood at the time of Jesus. But the the Pharisees, they were scholars. The Pharisees and teachers of the law muttered under their breath, 
This man welcomes sinners and he eats with them. Then Jesus told this, them this parable. Suppose one of you has 100 sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after that lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, I love this in Luke. Luke is an incredible writer. And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders. Now, that, that, how do you like that for imagery? It's like, have you ever had a cat or a dog that was lost? You know, um, I know as a kid, Fritz, I loved Fritz. He was this mutt that we had, this mutt. He was, he was part schnauzer, part terrier, part anything, all over the place. He was smart as can be, and I grew up, I think he was, we got him at the pound when I was like three or something like that, and he was all the way there until my junior year in academy, and I remember once, I, I, maybe I vaguely remember, Fritz would ran away once from the house or did something, and he was gone for days. He was gone for days, and mom and dad, this was in New Jersey when we lived there in South Jersey, for sure the dog is dead. What, what's going on? We were looking, Fritz, <laughs> going out looking for him, and when he came back, you know what we did? Did we beat him within an inch of his life? <laughs> no. Because we love him. Oh, it's so nice. Don't go out again. Don't do that again. Where were you? Yo, Fritz comes back, and he's like, he's been through whatever. I have no idea what he did out there. I don't want to know. All I know is he came home. It reminds me of this lamb that Jesus throws over the shoulders, or, or should I say in the parable, you carry him. You're so happy. No, it, forget. Walk. Get over here. Follow me. Instead, it's on the shoulders with love and caring for this lost sheep. I want to stop real quick there. You remember the story where it began is there were tax collectors and sinners. People who uh, don't know Jesus, who don't know God were around him. And the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, isn't it sad when we as church people sometimes put ourselves and our politics before those who are in need? The church is to absolutely be a hospital. I know there are some that theologically love to say, oh no, it shouldn't be a hospital. It needs to be a preparation zone for heaven. Well, what else is a hospital? Preparation zone for life, right? To become better, to become more well, to become less sick so that we're not coughing and sputtering and having an unhappy existence. In this search for lost sheep, I want to look real quickly at how Christianity has done a good job, sometimes a poor job. We we Christians sometimes do a very poor job, but sometimes we do a, a very good job at some things. And I'd like to bring out some pictures of what we... Now, now, when, now this is going to be a jump here. We just looked at, remember, the, um, the sheep and how Jesus, or should I say the, the shepherd, the good shepherd goes after the sheep, looking for the sheep. And so many times we have pictures, and I love the one that has the sheep that's the black sheep, the different one, the one that's always set apart from the other sheep, the one that's odd. But I'd like you now to think of it differently. How is it that Jesus reached you or reaches others? Some people in today's culture, because of culture, you know, uh, because of multiculturalism, we oftentimes take and we say that we have to have Jesus exactly in the look that he was in the first century. And we all know from history that he was Jewish. Most likely he had dark hair, probably somewhat tight curls in his hair. 
darker skin, sephoretic in nature, in the way he looked. But here is a picture, and which camera are we on here? Over here? All right. I've got a, a picture here from the 1960s. Here's Max von Sydow. You see this? Look of Jesus. Now, anybody that's here can come up and see. If you go on Facebook, you can see this easily. It's, um, it's a hard, I, I don't have a big screen, so here I am, right? And, uh, but this guy actually is, is very interesting. He was darker skinned. You'd think in the 1960s they would have gone for a blondie, and they didn't. They did a pretty good job. George Stevens did an okay job, you know. But some of us, it doesn't reach. Because maybe a white guy that looks like him doesn't really t touch us. Here's another. Here's another one. You see this? Uh, which camera? Right over here. Jesus of Nazareth. Have you seen Jesus? Raise your hand if you've seen Jesus of Nazareth. The first one, of course, was greatest story ever told. Not many people saw it. Jesus of Nazareth. Did you guys see Jesus of Nazareth? Not many. You know what? We need to do some. We need to do some movie nights here, huh? Some great films that are out there telling about the life of Jesus. Maybe our young people would understand a little bit more about Jesus if they could watch it as well as just trying to read and have Bible class. He was good, but, you know, much of Christendom had a different look, though. You ever see this picture? Which camera is it? Here. Here on this side is the Shroud of Turin. You ever see the Shroud of Turin? Over in Torino, Italy, many people don't believe this is necessarily true. Some do. I personally don't know how in the world Shroud of Turin could have been made at that time and photographically made in that way, but then there is a picture, kind of an image, and you'll see this in many Catholic churches or Eastern European churches, this look. See that look there? We don't really get a... From this picture, we don't get a cultural resemblance, but you can see the longer face. Not, def not Western, definitely not German, not French. We're talking more Middle Eastern look. A little longer face, a little more tighter curls, longer beard. But then there's some other pictures we have, I have here, of ways that people have seen Jesus. Leonardo da Vinci, which camera is it? Leonardo da Vinci. See this? What color is this guy? He's a white guy, isn't he? Middle Ages. Well, 1500s. It's the beginning of the, uh, it's beginning of the, um, the Renaissance, right? Reformation, Renaissance, that whole period. And the very, very pale white skin. Now, let me ask you, how many here, raise your hand, if this Jesus is the impression that you feel he looks like? Uh, I know, your hands aren't going up, huh? It's, uh, he's got like red hair. He's very European, very French looking. France was very, um, I mean, it was uh, the, uh, Eastern, the Eastern Christianity where, where it, it exported to France, that kind of Christianity. But then I move now, I'm going to move east. This is literally black Jesus. In Eastern Europe, and Russian Orthodox, you see this up in, in the area. I remember watching a film called Red Tails. You ever see the movie Red Tails? It has to do with the Tuskegee Airmen during World War II, the African-American squadrons that flew during World War II. And one of the characters in there has Black Jesus sitting there. He says, hey, Black Jesus, be with me. Now, I know we all... You know, some of us like to laugh at that and say, well, he, didn't, he looked like this, he didn't look like that. But what is the message you're getting right now about how Jesus reaches people? Does Jesus ex expect you in your own and our own prejudices that we grow up from this big, we all have prejudices, I'm not talking about necessarily cultural prejudices. I'm talking about just plain prejudices, how we are as human beings. Do we expect that Jesus be exactly the way, or, or we, do we think that Jesus, let me rephrase everything, stop. Don't we think 
that Jesus would come to us as we were rather than us having to reach to him? If he is like the shepherd who goes and searches for the sheep? Black Jesus. Let's continue on here. Actually, we have this Dore painting here, this Dore, uh, 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 this Dore picture of the idea of Jesus during the 1400s to 1600s era. And then we have another black Jesus here. This one's definitely Russian Orthodox, Greek Orthodox, the darker skin. But, you know, it wasn't just, Jesus doesn't just reach out to Europe and to Eastern Europe and to Africa, but he also reaches in other areas. And I've got some pictures here of something that I saw in Thailand. When I was in Thailand, the Adventists, we Adventists have, go ahead and put it on this camera as well, James. We have a, we have a, a center called the Buddhist Adventist Center, which is brings in Buddhist monks to teach them what we believe as Adventists and to you know, create discussion. It's right near Wat Prakau, where, uh, where the king has his palace. And we see this picture. How does this guy look? He looks almost like Chinese, huh? Very white skinned with the, with, the, with the eyes that are pulled to the side like in Asia. I remember once when I was having a talk with someone, someone goes, oh, that's so nice. It's so nice, to, but you know, it's very off-putting, the person was. And I went, what's wrong with that? We know that Jesus cares about everyone. Why can't we say, it may not, Jesus may not look like this. Maybe there's a reason why we as human beings don't have pictures of Jesus. So that we are forced to discover him in our culture. Are you with me? How many of us have instead of exporting Jesus to others, or should I say showing people Jesus, how many of us have merely exported our culture instead of allowing Jesus to come into their lives in the way they can understand it. Do you understand what I'm getting at? Here's another. Which, which camera? We got this one again. Okay. Um, here's the second coming. You see that second coming here? If you watch this later on, you can see. It actually has... John in Thai, John 3.16, there. And everybody, and Jesus is coming on the horse, and he looks just like, just like a Buddhist, almost like a, a, a Buddhist artwork, but yet the message is full on Bible. As I go to Mexico, I also see when we're driving, mom and dad and Anna and James and John, when we were going down into Mexico, we would go and we would see a large statue with the sacred heart, you know? The sacred heart that, you know, that is uh, very Catholic, where you have the heart with the crown of thorns, the fire. And I immediately ask myself, why in the world when I see that, why is it Jesus is pointing at this heart? What is this all about? And then I start thinking about what cultures have that heart. And I notice that it's in South America where culturally, before Jesus came, there were human sacrifices where hearts were actually removed. People were sacrificed to the gods and Jesus is saying, my heart was sacrificed for you. You don't have to give up your heart for me. I give it for who? You. I want you to know that these messages 
come from someone who truly does love you. I'd like you to turn in your Bible to John chapter 15. We're in Luke 15. Turn to John 15 right now. John chapter 15. He says in verse 9, As the Father... Are you with me? Say amen if you're there. All right. As the Father has loved me, so I, what? Loved you. By the way, the word here is have loved you, not just loved. It's not past tense. It's past perfect tense, which is I've loved you in the past. I love you now, and the results of it are seen to this very moment. I have loved loved you and remain in my love if you keep my commandments you will remain in my love just as I have kept my father's commandments and remain in his love well, let's stop right there basically what I see in this is Jesus comes to us in the culture in which we find ourselves he looks whatever way our mind sees him and then you know what he does he then asks us to be like him. So in essence, what Jesus does is he comes to us just like we understand. This is, what the, rev this is the great revolution that happened during the, um, during the, uh, 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 the Reformation. The Bible was able to be written in local languages, not just in a language that you had to learn Latin to find out about Jesus. No, you could have him in your own language. You could have him. He came to us. He came searching through the wilderness for that one lamb. He came to us looking like us. And then what he does is he teaches us his commands so that we may be like what? Him. Crushing the prejudices that we have in our lives. Th are you with me? Does that make sense? So he comes to us when we are prejudiced and we, when we were sinners, when we, were, when we only thought about ourselves. Jesus reaches out to us in our position. And then as like a child when you're teaching them to walk, they stand up, then he starts to step back and move like this, and the child kind of come, come, come. Have you, you know that? All moms and dads, you know about that, right? You keep, come on, you can keep walking, keep walking. We get bigger, we get stronger, and now he says, keep my commandments because I love you. And if you love me, keep my commandments, Jesus says. And that remains in, my, in the love that I have for you. Verse 11, I have told this so that my joy may in you may, and the joy, excuse me, let me restart that. My reading sometimes is amazing. Forgive my dyslexia. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Verse 12, my command is this, that you what? Love one another, even as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lays down his life for his friends. And you are my what? Friends. You are you. Jesus says, are my friends, because I lay down my life for you, Jesus said. He came into a world of darkness and entered that darkness, not because he was dark. I'm not talking about moral darkness right now. But because he felt and wished to reach you. In your culture, in your history, in the madness that sometimes you experience, he came into that. All because he loves you. You are my friends. 
Who here sees Jesus as an actual friend? I know we sometimes have different views and we, we think, imagine a friend that could be with you all the time, see all the junk you do in your life, and yet still likes you. Doesn't mean that it's okay to keep doing the junk. Because if you love me, Jesus says, you will keep my what? Commandments. Because he knows that as you keep the commandments of God, you're going to be happier. You're going to have more joy in your life. You can have it overflowing. And heck, think about it. If nobody enjoys following Jesus, then who's going to follow them to follow Jesus, right? As we are happy and joyfully following, we're going to discover that people actually want to come to him. Who wants to come to a God that just brings boredom and just has a bunch of sad people? Right, guys? Who wants that? We want to be joyful. We want to have joy. Friendship brings joy. And, and you know, when we get to heaven, when we get to heaven, I think we're going to have a lot of fun. Heaven is not one of those places that I think about having a lot of time, though I, I think it's good to live forever. Frankly, living forever isn't very much fun if it's not good. Who wants to live forever with someone you don't like? Nobody. In fact, heaven is hell for someone who doesn't want to love Jesus. <laughs> Just think about it. But what makes heaven incredible is being with him, with others that love him and are actual friends. I read that fortune cookie from Proverbs that said there is a friend that is closer than a brother. I would put to you that Solomon was directly referring to Jesus himself. We have all kinds of friends which are friends. We like them. They're great. But closer than a brother is Jesus. Have you met Jesus? Through all, and maybe you've been at church. Maybe this pandemic time has been a good time for you to discover whether you really care about being with Jesus. How many of you have been yearning to be with Him? You know, the longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows, right? God came from eons of time and space through to this earth, and he became a human being so that we, the sinners, just like the tax collectors and sinners, we, the sinners, can meet the God of the universe. And He carries us on His shoulders with joy. He carries you with joy. If you do not know Him, if you do not have that joy, it's time to begin today. Before we go through all the commandments and all the things we're supposed to do, remember the reason why you serve your spouse or your parents or your children is not because you have to serve them. It's because you love them. If you have a love for he who loves you, who has searched for you, came in the way you understand and ask you to be just like him. That's power. May God bless you all.
Let's bow our heads with the word of prayer. Father, heaven, Lord, we thank you so much for another Sabbath day. And Lord, uh, we know that you choose us every day, Lord. Help us to choose you each day. Uh, be with us throughout the rest of this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Ryan. And now, I know we're a little bit later with some little te technical difficulties we were dealing with, but... Um, if you're on Facebook right now, please like the, uh, like our page, whether it's Sunland Thunga or Living Stones. We'd love to see you back. Subscribe also at YouTube. We're going to get YouTube online soon. God bless you all. Have a happy Sabbath. Bye-bye.